Good morning, and welcome to a brief episode of The Angry Astronaut. At the Made for Space conference, I had an opportunity to interview a company called New Space Systems. Now, they're based out of South Africa, but have extensive operations in the United Kingdom as well. They're a satellite company of sorts, but in addition to that, they also provide a lot of supplemental systems for satellites, including systems that allow them to stay in orbit orbit without using any propellant. Pretty amazing, and we're going to find out more about that. But the most exciting thing that they're offering is a method to provide reusability to launch providers without these launch providers having to design that reusability system themselves. It's a parafoil recovery system, kind of similar to what Rocket Lab is doing, but with a lot of advantages. And we're going to find out more about that right now. All right, guys, we are here with New Space Systems today. Sir, would you be so kind as to introduce yourself to the viewers? Okay. Um, I'm John Moss. I'm Managing Director of New Space Systems in the UK. New Space Systems uh, now are a worldwide organization, and mainly we supply attitude control systems for satellites. The UK specializes in special projects, if you like, and one of the special projects that we've got on the go at the moment is what we're calling Glide 2. Glide 2 is a, guide, a GPS guided powerful recovery system. That means that what we're able to do is to recover first stage rockets, capsules, high altitude balloon experiments, all with a guided parafoil. The advantage in that is that um, we hit certain waypoints on the way down and we can offer the payload up for a mid-air retrieval, for instance, with a helicopter. We're able to land accurately uh, on land or we can land very accurately, let's say, very close to a ship on the ocean. So this, I'm sorry to cut you off. This sounds very similar to what Rocket Lab is doing um, with their parafoil recovery. Other companies are talking about this as well. What's the maximum payload capability of this parafoil system? And also, what kind of advantages does it have? Yep. The, currently, the maximum payload that um, we are looking at are 2,500 kilograms which is quite good because that puts it into the capsule recovery. Capsule obviously being probably the, the heaviest uh, payload that we might want to recover. Um, yes, Rocket Labs are doing um, a very similar thing. They are offering their system up for mid-air retrieval using a helicopter. They've had mixed success, I think is true to say. Um, but uh, we would like to talk to them. Um, it may be that uh, longer term we could have some sort of um, partnership with, with them or other companies that um, are, are doing that same sort of uh, technology. Um, but one of the things we are finding very interesting and we, we've had a lot of interest in this is the high altitude balloon. The high altitude balloon actually goes up to near space. So you're still uh, subject to the uh, environmental conditions of space, so very low, um, very low temperatures, um, almost vacuum type environment. And a lot of people like to do experiments at that uh, altitude. Um, but what we can do, what we can offer, is to put Glide 2 on the system, and then when the experiment's finished, and, and bearing in mind that some of these payloads can be worth anything up to about 5 million euros, we can actually very neatly, very softly recover and land the payload. So we, we come down from the high altitude, we deploy Glide 2, it comes down in a, in a guided fashion in that we hit waypoints on the way down. We get down to pretty much landing and then what we do is we go into the wind and flare 
the uh, powerful. Just as you might see um, people when they're paragliding, they do exactly the same thing. They, they land into the wind, they flare their uh, parafoil, and they can almost land walking. Um, and, and that's the same sort of principle that um, we operate. So yeah, that's what you're telling me then is, is this can handle um, sea landings as well as on land. Now, in terms of uh, one thing that intrigued me about some of your satellite systems is how you're using the Earth's magnetic field to do um, adjustments with satellites without having to use any fuel. Can you explain that? Yeah, uh, okay, we don't, we don't use any fuel. We obviously use power. Um, so what we have are um, magnetorca rods that um, when they're powered, they, um, interact with the Earth's magnetic field and produce their own magnetic field and align themselves um, to that field, which means that if you have three in three different axes of the satellite, then you can move the satellite slowly, but you can move the satellite into position. Adjacent to those um, magnetorca rods, we also have reaction wheels. And reaction wheels have a rotating brass mass inside them. They get powered up, they rotate, and um, if you rotate a, ro a wheel uh, clockwise, then the satellite will try to move anti-clockwise. Um, again, you have three um, wheels, one on each axis, and you can pretty much, again, move the um, satellite to a position using the uh, reaction wheels. So this, um, it, it, you have a lot of customers, I understand now. I mean, the obviously, I don't think the parafoil thing is in use currently. But I mean, how many customers do you have worldwide for your various products? We, we have uh, customers on all continents now. Um, we have a lot of customers uh, in the States. We, we have customers um, in Australia, in, uh, yeah, just, just, just about everywhere, really. Fantastic. And so this is a uh, UK industry. I, from what you were telling me, it's manufactured in South Africa, but a lot of the work is done here as well. Can you explain that yeah. process? Yeah, sure. Um, the uh, parent company, if you like, is based in Cape Town, based in uh, the Western Cape. Um, they have down there a facility that is second to none. It, it's fantastic clean rooms. We build all our products in clean rooms and we use European Space Agency qualified, in, um, qualified technicians to build the products. Um, we have also now, because we're getting involved in constellations of satellites, the problem is the numbers are going up and you can't just keep throwing people at numbers. So we've now brought in some machines, some semi-automatic assembly equipment. So we're now able to screen paste the board. We can populate components onto the paste, and then we reflow using vapor phase reflow to solder the components onto the board. In that, in that way, we are able to increase our volume quite substantially uh, to cope with the incoming uh, orders of um, hundreds and, and sometimes thousands of um, standard products that we're having to produce. Lots of innovation happening right here in the UK. Thank you so much for your time today, John. Okay, thank you very much for interviewing me.